the McDonald Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have our girl, Lala Kent. Give them Lala. Hello. Give them Lala on Juicy Scoop. Welcome back. For the fifth time, I think, right? I think it might be the sixth. Damn. We have so much to discuss. There's so many topics, lots of housewife stuff. But first, how are you doing? I'm happy. Yeah? Yeah. What Last... can you What can you share with the Juicy Scoopers about your traumatic, juicy life? That's hopefully not <laughs> as traumatic as it used to be. You know what? There was It was a traumatic experience. My bounce back was like super quick. I find that to be easy when like you finally have a bird's eye view on your life and you're like, wow, I really didn't like you ever. And Oh, so now you look back at everything of like kind of a different perspective of like you were just sort of accepting was, and going through the motions. I was existing. And, yeah. I was existing in my life. Like I, I like stayed in a bathrobe all day. I just felt like lifeless for a long time oh yeah especially after i stopped drinking and i like realized what i was in but i was like oh he's nice to me so like i'll stick around whatever have a baby um but last night i like had this moment so i've i've cleared every picture video everything of him off my phone like non-existent but a memory popped up and you could see like a piece of his face so i was like we need to go back through we got to comb through this and so I'm going through deleting photos and then I start getting to like all of when the shit hit the fan and text messages and I put my phone down and I was like, thank you, Jesus. Like I looked around in my apartment and I felt euphoric that just like I'm free. And I got out of it with like a metaphorical scratch. Like I'm happy as it gets. Good. You know? Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, and, and then, you know, also, it's just like, I mean, not that there was ever hope that you'd get back together right. shortly after. I mean, like, when it first broke, I thought there was, yeah. which is like why well, I was talking to you and even talking to him for a little bit. Yeah. and But I also think the finality of knowing that, like, can help you move on quicker. I think sometimes when couples go back and forth or there's – that's, like, typical, but because it was so – well, thank you, thank, thank you for being yeah. so awful that there is no choice. Like, yeah. then that's also sometimes a gift. Sometimes yeah. someone treating you so badly is the gift because there's no question yeah. in your mind. Or well, whatever. that's the thing. He's such a mastermind manipulator that, like, I thought he was like really a good dude to me. So I like made concessions for the fact that like I couldn't stand him. And I was like, but he's nice. Like, he takes care of me. Like, he cares about what I'm saying, which really, I don't even remember ever being able to get a word in. But, and I haven't shared this with anybody, I would beg the universe at night, like, give me something. Give me something. Because for me, there's no coming back from drug use and there's no coming back from cheating. And I would beg the fucking universe, give me a reason. Like, I have to give you a reason to give leave. me a reason to get the fuck out of this. I would lay in bed looking at his back at night, being like, please. And on October 15th, the universe fucking provided me with everything and more. Yeah, because who knows how much longer you would have maybe continued to like be in the dark about it. Yeah, yeah. I was completely in the dark. And. You know, I I don't know him. I don't want to know him. I don't want to be associated. Like, he will never be around me ever again. And I I told him, like, you also don't know me. Because that version that I was with you was not me. What was the version then? What was that then for five years? Were you just... Growing up, someone or what? existing. I had my dukes up all the time because I constantly was being poked at in that relationship. So I constantly was in fight mode. I was constantly just on the defense, and that's not me. Yeah, like I am sensitive, and I can I can be tough. But like when you're home in a safe place, I don't want to be tough. I yeah. want to chill, and like you know, I just feel so grateful that I found all this stuff out because and it and it keeps coming it keeps coming and then I just I literally 
have all the moments of gratitude in the world. Even though, like, I'm still going through it and I got to protect O, I'm like, this is... O is uh, short for ocean? Yes. Yeah. This was fucking divine intervention. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're, <clears throat> you're doing better and I'm glad you guys are moving on. Yes, and I can get back to what I'm physically attracted to. Tall, dark, and handsome, covered in tattoos, Oh, banging... Is there somebody, because I sent you the photo that everyone thinks is who you're dating, and you said, no, that wasn't it. Do you remember this? Was he a white boy? He was white with tattoos and very no. physically fit. No. That and wasn't someone him. put a photo of your former with him saying, <laughs> how's it going and how's it going now or something? That but that is awesome. not your dude. No. Okay. He's like a dear friend of mine. That guy. And yeah. But, but no, not I've never hooked up with him. Okay. Not romantic, no. Will you show me who you're dating after the show? Yes. Okay. When, of course. When do you think we'll see that? Not for, not for a minute. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's like someone who should be protected just for a moment, you know, because I'm, I'm in it balls deep. Right now, Ooh. with my personal, I, I know like I haven't balls. Or, <laughs> no, no, I oh. haven't had sex yet. Oh, I haven't had. I haven't slept with anybody. Oh my god! I know it's gonna close up like a pierced ear. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you have to no. like stretch before you're like all scared. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I don't think it works that way, does it? Fuck. <laughs> I don't know. It would have closed up already. I mean, I haven't gotten laid since July of 2020, so. Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. All right. Um, it's the juice. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> we have so many things to cover. Now, unfortunately, this weekend, friends of ours are also breaking up. Okay. Um, million Dollar Listings, Josh Flagg is divorcing husband Bobby Boyd. Yeah. This is from page six. They both gave their own statements yeah. on Friday night. Um, you know, I was aware of this before. And again, when How I How long first, before? Do you know? Just a couple weeks. Or can you say, I mean? A couple weeks that they were separated. And then... Because um, Josh was staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel, which it said in, I think, yes, this article. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, you know, when you've got money and you don't have kids, maybe being living separate is kind of a nice thing to sort of figure out and like, you know, wait, we do really miss each other or whatever. Like I thought it was like a healthy thing to do that a lot of people cannot afford to do and don't have the means to just be like, oh, my God, could you go to your own place? Like yeah. a lot of people don't have that. So, But then when it was made definitive, and I was made aware of it a little before this, then I was, you know, sad about it. But they'll both be fine. And, you know. I was sad about it, too. Yeah. I love them both. I know. And I I had fun with them together. I never, like, some people I've talked to, like, did you, was it tension? Was it uncomfortable? I'm like, it actually really wasn't for me. Like, I kind of just thought that was, like, their fun, like, banter. Totally. And I wasn't really worried. Also, it's like. I was telling you, you know, it's like we all have gay friends, you know, couples. Mm-hmm. But a gay male couple is different than a female couple. I mean, we all have similarities in just being in a relationship with right. partners. But there is stuff that's different. And I'm like, you know, like one of the things is like they each had uh, different groups of friends who would do stuff separately. And some of our mutual friends was like, ooh, I don't think that's good. And I'm like, well, as a heterosexual couple, like, Peter goes off and totally golfs all day without me, and I have my girls' night with you. And right, we're fine. Twenty one years later, so I'm like, so why can't a gay couple have different you friend, know I mean? like so, friend groups? Yeah, so that didn't concern me. But in the end, maybe they just wanted they. I think they are very different people, and they wanted different things. That and, I did sense. Yeah, that and, they were wanting different things, but it feels like just based off of their statements yeah that they would be able to maintain a friendship he what i've heard from josh is that absolutely like he wants the best for bobby yeah that's what it's in like success it's, and everything it's just like they just were not in a happy state anymore and when you as you know like waking up every day and then and then when you finally make that mm-hmm. break and realize no this Go wasn't be happy yeah Life this wasn't too short yeah and they don't have kids yeah. So it's like... Goodbye. And they have yeah. the means to move on. You know, a lot of people have to stay in something miserable because they can't afford 
something different. Yeah. When I read that he was staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel, I was like, I'm so sorry about all this, but why the fuck haven't you invited me to the polo lounge? He did, though. But now, remember when we were, remember when you were writing about what are we going to do for Super Bowl? Yes. But it was before I fell on my head. <laughs> and so, and he said, why don't we do, why don't we get a cabana at the Beverly Hills oh, Hotel? Is that, he was already living there? I don't know if you want, now I don't know, but I, I kind of wrote like, that's not what we want to do for Super Bowl. I was wanting to like, now I don't know. Maybe they were. Now I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Anyway. (laughs) Yeah. No. So (laughs) they're going to be fine. I'll try to get him in here to tell more. Hello, and if you want even more Juicy Scoop, I'm talking the serious, super juicy scoop, you've got to join my Patreon. You go to heathermcdowell.net, and you click on Patreon. I've been doing it for three years. That means if you join today, every episode at the level of Patreon that you join, you will have access to. Join it, get the inside scoop on Hollywood, friends, my life, my inner thoughts. Everyone that has joined has loved it. Okay, this story is the juiciest story ever that I've been obsessed with. Sherry Papini, in November of 2016, went missing. Do you know the story? Tell me. Okay. So it was kind of middle Northern California in sort of a rural rural area, but like a nice area. Okay. She had a very cute husband. Okay. They were just like picture perfect, adorables, two little kids. And yes. he came home from to the house, and she wasn't there. And he thought that was kind of weird. And then he checked, and the daycare said she did never picked up the kids. So he started to get panicked. I've heard the 911 calls. He goes and sees – and she's a pretty blonde. They're both white. She's a pretty blonde girl and very fit. And he saw that her iPhone was, like, dropped in the grass, and the, the air – pods had like a blonde hair wrapped around them okay so the first thought was oh my god she went on a run earlier in the day and someone grabbed her or something happened and so this a lot of people looking for a lot of people wondering what could it be and there was thoughts could she have been kidnapped to be sex trafficked because maybe they thought with no makeup on and her little body maybe they thought she was even younger than she was because i think she's only maybe like 30 but, you know, so that's a... She a looks hot, very young. That's a hot commodity in the sex trafficking mm-hmm. world. Three weeks go by. Nobody knows where she is. Dad, dad's crying. I don't know what to tell my kids. He, they get a call. A woman has been found walking on a highway at night with chains still tied to her. Her hair has been, like, cut and beat up. And they, it's her. Okay. She's alive. And they call him and they say, come to the um, hospital. Let me prepare you about how your wife looks. You know, she has been beat up and she's been branded. Like, you know how they would brand like a cow, but Mm -hmm. like, and also sometimes in like um, black fraternities and sororities, they, or maybe not sororities, but black fraternities, they would do that. I don't know. It's just a weird, like, I know. Yeah, no, I know what it looks like. So she, all we get as people at home, is that she says, I was kidnapped by two Mexican women. And this is what the photos are. So for three weeks... It looks like a man. I like that she gave one, like, just one giant earring. Okay. (laughs) This is how she explained them? This is how she explained them, and then someone drew them. Okay. You know, um, and this was before COVID, but they wore masks the whole time. And that's all we know. We don't know if she was being screwed every day by eight people. We don't know if she was being... And then I was like, well, if she was being sex trafficked, why would they want to make her look ugly and chop off her blonde hair? And brand her and beat her her up. What is this weird thing? Who are these two weird Mexicans? And then we're like, are they lesbians? And they they, they made her do lesbian stuff? Like, what's going on? Media people on the internet are in Facebook groups are like, I call bullshit. Okay. Like, I knew this girl... You know, I know people that knew of her. At one point, someone found a posting that was derogatory towards Mexicans that she had written or something years back. When okay. she was, so they're like, why is she saying it's, you know, but we don't, he- we don't really know anything. Then she goes back. 
She gets uh, receives forty nine thousand dollars from a GoFundMe that began when she went missing. She also gets another thirty thousand from the state or the city for victim help that paid for her ambulance ride. Which, by the way, that's why I didn't accept an ambulance ride when I hit my so head. Expensive. From it's so the mo- expensive. And the only way you'll get the money back is if you were like a victim of a crime in right. LA, I guess, or in California. She gets thirty, and she spent it on blinds for her home. So, like, because people were so nosy. And they go on to live their life, and we never know what happens. It, about a year ago, they interview her again in 2020, and they're like, we have reason to believe that you – there was male DNA found on you, and we believe that it might be connected to a man that we did all our research. You were writing to an old boyfriend. Mm. And she denies it, denies it. At one point, they thought the husband was involved. Um but I was just like, who the hell just like hides out for like some drama and then cuts off their pretty hair and like hits themselves and like brands themselves? Like, who does this? I know. Anyway, she was arrested on Friday for faking her own kidnapping. Oh my God. She was getting old D in the OC. Yes. What she was a with a boyfriend bitch. in the OC in Costa Mesa for three weeks, and is was what the so, prosecution believes. And was so worried to be found, found out that she did all of that to make it look like she was kidnapped. Holy. I don't know who, I still don't know who the hell would put a branding thing on their arm. And I can understand like cutting your hair or even like throwing yourself against the wall to look bruised. Like, no, gone girl, I could never. The branding. I'm I know, terrified I could, of getting hurt. I could never There's hurt so many either. things I don't do because I'm like, there's the possibility I could get hurt. Yeah. So I'm certainly not branding myself or throwing myself into anything. I have been obsessed with um, fake kidnapping my whole life. And I actually wrote like an outline of a screenplay that, of course, I never got around to writing. When I was an aspiring stand-up comedian, and I could not get an agent. I had these big VHS tapes of like my stand-up and like my headshots and, you know. And one time a manager that wasn't doing anything for me, I was like, I'm done with you. And she's like, okay, come to my, my house and pick up your stuff. And I'd spent all this money and not one was missing. Like she did not send one videotape <laughs> or one headshot out. And I'm like, I swear to God, the only way anyone's going to know about Heather McDowell is if I go kidnap it, kidnapped. And I had this idea for a movie that, like, after I do my stand-up set, and it's a pretty good set, I, like, leave my Toyota Celica just, like, you know, like, door ajar, and then all those VHS tapes and my headshots, and I will, like, what if, for a movie, not yeah. in real life, and then, like, what if the character, like, fakes her own missing so that like people start talking about her and then people play the videotape and everything. And then I'm like, but then the then the you know, act two would be all her friends start getting on the hype that they're getting. Cause you know, they always interview the friends. Yeah. And then the friends throw a a, a charity event at the Laugh Factory and they all get featured. And all of them all of they start all of them start getting signed and everything. And no one's wondering about me anymore. And now how the fuck do I come out of this little like garage that I rented? <laughs> No, can so I tell you? Can talk this is what happened. Like that. There are so many times where I think about crimes. Yeah, because I watch a lot of Dateline twenty yes, twenty all, all this do. shit, yeah. and I'm like, no one could ever get away with this shit. Like the the little scenarios that I put together yeah. in my head, and I'm like, abort mission. <laughs> It's true. You won't. That They always will figure it out. Now, listen. Now, her family is very behind her, and they're like, this is absolutely horrible that the police arrested her so abruptly in front of her children. I'm like, abruptly? It took four years. Yeah, that's very true. It took four years. They made sure that they have a case. Have they spoken to the boyfriend in the OC? We don't know who the boyfriend is in the OC. We don't know. Would you die if it was like someone from Orange, like from Real Housewives of OC? But we don't know who the boyfriend is. We don't know how the how the husband's reacting. We don't know if the husband ever found out and forgave her. Uh, we, I mean, it's such a juicy mystery. What's I, the jail time on this if she's convicted? Can you look that up? It? We might go back. Like, if yeah. anyone's predicting what it might be, I don't know. I mean, that's a lot of resources. Oh, I know. To and I remember, spend on someone faking their kidnapping. What about the resources of Juicy Scoop? Like, I've spent hours talking about this story, and I 
then switched my opinion and was like, no, I really think that she was kidnapped. Like, even though I was hearing other stuff, I'm like, this is awful to, to claim that she's a gone girl. Because also around this time, there was this other story where people thought this couple in, like, Fullerton was faking the wife, the girlfriend's kidnapping. Yeah. And it turned out, no, 100% it was real. And because of Gone Girl, like, people were thinking this. Mm. And so I was like, come on. Like, people still get kidnapped and stuff. Like, this is awful. And I like to look in people's eyes. That's how I tell now, is I yes, look deep and- in the <laughs> eyes. She has a look like the girl in Dropout. Oh, yes. Let's get What's in- her name? Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes. Doesn't she have that kind of crazy look? Wait, I'm going ju- to jump. I'm going to jump. sentence is five years for her first charge and 20 years for the second. Oh, shit. Oh, charge carries a financial pen- penalty of 250000 She's not going to end up doing 25 years, okay? But she'll probably end up doing some. She'll do some time. She'll do like two and a half. Do you care that I did that anymore? No. I'll, I predict that two and a half yeah. is what she'll do. Two and a half, that's it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll be interested to see. And, I mean, I, I'll... Can, but can we – now, sometimes I think that you can't sell your story if you killed someone for profit, mm. but she didn't kill anybody. So, hello, let's pay back the victims yes. by doing a Netflix or whatever network you want story. Come on Juicy Scoop. I'll help sell your book. Just come out with your story. Just come out. What caused it? Did you miss your kids? What made you do this? Did you have a psychotic break or are you but just what a if- piece of shit? But what if she's just a piece of shit? The Netflix limited series <laughs> produced by Heather McDonald. Yes. No. What if? But what if she comes on here and she's like sticking true blue to her story? Those are the people. Go find them. I don't think they can because I think the only reason they adopt they arrested her is that I think whoever this guy is spoke, mm. and they must have some probably text messages evidence yeah, they that have puts something. them together. During that time in November of 2016, right, right. before Thanksgiving, there's got to, they would not, they would not arrest her in such like a sensitive no. kind of a thing unless they really have some evidence. The prosecution would not go after this. That's very true. Because it's kind of like, yes, it, it, it was resources, but there, you know, oftentimes what they consider a like a crime, a victimless crime, yeah, is something that they don't go after. So they they must really have evidence. They have that she something lied that made them show up to her house yes. and arrest her in front yeah. of her kids. Yeah, one hundred percent. Not so. Not Amanda. How do you say it? Seyfried? Yeah, see, Seyfried, Yeah, that's that's who's playing. That's who's playing. playing uh, what is the dark about girls? Holmes. Really? What is it? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Holmes. Holmes. We've this story has been. You know, on Dateline, Nightline, everything. Yeah, I've seen it. I remember reading about her before she was caught as a fraud in Glamour being like, I cannot believe how smart this girl is and that she, this pretty blonde thought of this way that everyone can get all their blood tested with just one drop, (laughs) one drop. Imagine my (laughs) uncle died of cancer and I want everybody to experience Saving lives of those you love. And with just one drop, we can test all these diseases. <laughs> so I started to watch it, too, on Hulu. Yeah. She's doing a great job as the character. She kills it. She kills it. She's an incredible actor. Right. Actress. Everyone in the show is killing it. And this is once a week. But I'm so Hulu. bored. It's a little bit boring in, boring in the beginning. But um, I need them to play some music, like how in Inventing Anna. Like, it made it interesting because, like, but Anna I would bored. come into the courthouse and it's like, my best friend, she a real bad. And I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah, hey. yeah. <laughs> I need them to do that. <laughs> well, Shonda Rhimes, you know, is diff- she can really bring some flavor to it. I, I was, I said I was bored in that first episode, too, and it got much better. So I think this might get uh, – what I want to see in this is – The dramatics of her realizing this fucking thing doesn't work and how – where do we go from here? Do we try to make it work? Like what is her – like what is her story of like realizing like holy shit, I have all these people working for me. I'm still playing along with this thing. Like I want to see that part of it. She dropped out of college though. And yes, yes, she like – they show her being compared to like Steve Jobs, college job, blah, 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 blah. But this is the medical field. Yeah. You need to go to school. Like all of these other people are like 
technology geniuses. Yes. Right? Like, if you've got that, you've got it. But, like, it ju- that part didn't make sense to me. Well, I talked to this billionaire. Okay, tell um, me. Like, I talked to a billionaire in the tech world. Because like, let me in, be honest, in, in I did two world. years of community college. So sometimes I say things that may make zero sense. No, no, no. Sense. But I, I asked him... <laughs> I asked him like like six months ago. I was like, "Do you know anybody that invested in the Theranos dropout? You know what? What do you think of that?" And he's like, "Oh, I knew all about it, and I told the people that were thinking about it. Like, it's it's not going to work. It's bullshit because he knows science. He's like, because he went to college. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, and I go, so why do you think she was able to get this much money? And he goes. Because a lot of billionaires, they just have money to give into things. And if one billionaire says do it, then another one goes, oh, it must be okay. Yeah. And, like, that's how she got all these, these you know, old white men with a lot of money to invest. Also, it probably looked good that she was a female and they were putting their money into, like, a female, a young female-based company. Okay. Without really asking I don't, hard questions, I guess. Because I look at people like her. Yeah. And Anna Delvey. Yeah. And I'm like, how these women got so... Like, I can't even get a massage without paying the person on the spot. Like, no, no Venmo me later. No uh, PayPaling me later. Yeah. You'll pay me right now. Well, and then you're giving massages? No. If I have a... <laughs> if someone comes to, like, give me a massage, it's not like... They, they're they collecting payment before they yeah, leave my yes, house. Yes, yes. How are these people showing up with, like, nothing? And people are like, sure, here's millions. What the fuck? Because I think it's all about the vouching. It's like this, I, you're, you're, you have these people vouching for you. So you just need one power need, player to vouch. Yes. To okay. invite you to a party, to let you let everybody know, oh my God, she's great. And let me just tell you, rich and powerful people are lonely too. They don't always have plans every Friday and Saturday night. You become friends with one of them. They're so happy to have a friend. They'll just throw then money they, at you. Then they start to, then you, you know, you bullshit your way. You people, bullshit your way. Bullshit it. Okay, let's get into a couple other things here. Um, Real Housewives of OC. Like I said, we don't know if any of these girls know the guy that was screwing sherry papini or whatever her name is <laughs> did you watch the uh, the latest episode yes obviously okay well a lot of the comments were i cannot believe how perfectly this worked out to promote heather and terry dubrow's new show you're welcome heather because i'm giving you <laughs> some promo right here they have a new show on e 10 o'clock on tuesdays called the seven year itch where they yeah. help couples get cute and see if they can save their marriage at the same time because okay. they're not happy. And then at the end, they either have to take their new face and new wardrobe and stay together or take that new face and wardrobe and find some new dick. Okay? <laughs> and Heather's there to help because she's been with Terry for 25 years. Okay. So in this episode, throughout the season, we've been seeing her give advice to Dr. Jen, mm-hmm. who uh, is t- having trouble with her stay-at-home husband. Ryan. Ryan and um, and I thought that this scene at Heather DeBro's dinner party where she's like, you know, I'm going to show that with other fabulous couples, you could be a fabulous couple too, <laughs> and you could throw fabulous dinner parties when you have a staff and someone who does the florals. I mean, like, I know who can't have a dinner party like this? Whip it up in a second. It's very simple, and you also have a printed menu and all this other stuff, like. And uh, so she invites a couple other couples that have been yes. married a long time over. And I just felt like, listen, this dinner party went on for probably three to four hours because Jen got really wasted. She wasted. We saw 12 minutes of the the most awkward moments. And I really felt like it was kind of the cruelest editing I've ever seen happen to a Real Housewives husband because Jen's husband was just – like, obviously very shy, does not enjoy being on camera. No. And what <laughs> what I think people don't realize that are, like, watching at home. Yeah. When last week's episode. Yeah. So not the dinner party, but when I think it's when Jen sits down with him and he's like, I'm not doing this. Yeah. And, like, if you're just, like, a normal viewer. Yeah. You're like, what a dick. And it's like, no, he's clearly stating we'll do this later. Not on a camera. Right. Get right. the cameras off of me immediately. 
Let so, me take my little dog. Let me take my dog and take a walk. And when they leave, we can have a real sit down conversation. Yeah. And I also think he's annoyed because it's like she already has no time for him. And now you've signed up for a reality show. So on your free time, you're going to go film a TV show. I'm sure he's and pick like fights with me because that's our storyline right. that we're the only you always need one couple on the verge of being arrested or divorced. It's intense. I feel <laughs> I feel sorry for him. Is he getting heat on social media? I know from a very good source, the good news is he does not watch, and I don't think he's on social media. But, so but I don't think he has a clue of how awful people are, are saying. being to him. Well, I think people feel bad for him, but I think people are also like, the way it's edited, they're like, I mean, I've seen things, and I'm just going to say, this is what I've seen people write. You know, is he on the spectrum? Is the dog a special, um, an, um, an emotional support animal because he was sad he couldn't bring the dog to dinner? Is that his only friend? Um, why did he tell Terry that he's never had a job when, in fact, he works with this, like, vacation rental situation in Hawaii? He does have a job. Okay. So I'm like, do the producers just tell him that? Like, hey, when Terry asks you about your work, just remember to say you don't have a job. Like, could that have happened? And he's like, all right. I mean, the choice of socks with the dress shoes, the putting the napkin around his uh, collared shirt, which you'd only do at like a weird, like touristy lobster situation. Totally, It was <laughs> odd. Like you're, I mean, did you, did well, you just come off an up? island? Like well, where you, did he grow up? I mean, he's been married and raising kids for three years. I mean, the whole thing of like, I just feel like these, like, remember how Shannon Bedore would be like, Shannon Bedore, Shannon Bedore. And like, yeah. I think she revealed to me, like, they tell me to say my last name, like, Shannon Bedore, Shannon. Oh. And, like, because it becomes these little, like, kitschy moments for totally. the show. So yeah. I think they were, like, always bringing up the fact that he doesn't wear a shirt. And I'm sure, like, the gay producers are like, I don't be shirtless. Like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like we've made this, like, cartoon character, and I honestly feel really bad. I do, too. I don't think their marriage is in a great place. They probably both be happier. I mean, I, I don't know. But I, I think oftentimes people go on the show to... Like save let, a let's, save a marriage. Either they go. I want the world to see how awful my husband is being to me, and, and I want him to see it, feel bad, and then love me more. Or that's happened before, though. Yeah. Remember, um, Takeman. What's her oh, name Kristen again? Kristen Takeman. Yeah. They're, like when I watched them, I was like, they're never gonna last. They're still together, right? Because they watched themselves back. And, like, made an effort in their marriage. They were like, this is not working because they saw it for themselves. It's like yeah. the ultimate mirror. They, they're they one of few. I mean, most of the... But, they were, but she also was not asked back to the show with mm. enough time to save it. Even after the That's Ashley true. Madison scandal. You know what the Ashley Madison No. Said? Oh, he, he. there was a big thing with... You know what Ashley Madison is? No. Oh, it's a dating site for married people to find each other to, to screw. Like, we're so, both married, let's screw, we're never going to leave our spouses, but, like, meet me at the Starbucks on Ventura if you're in my does neighborhood. Does the other spouse know about it? No. So it's where you find a mistress? or a- it's also married. It's, you have to be married, so it's like we're on the same page. We Life is short, have an affair. And anyway... They discover. I don't relate. They I dis- cannot they wrap discover- my mind around it. Well, I remember right when it happened, I was sort of obsessed. Who was on? Her or him? Him. And mm. she came on my show. She said it was a joke. He and his friends did it. And their names. And then there was like a scandal. And they found a bunch of like D-list celebrities, him being one of them, like a scandal of like people that were on it. And at when I was at Chelsea lately, I... Didn't put any photos or anything, but we, like, did it just to see. Yeah. And I put in my zip code, and I put my age and my name, yeah. and that is – not my name, my age and where I lived. Okay. And immediately, guys wanted to meet me. And you didn't even have a photo. Didn't even have a photo. No description of myself. Yo, these dudes are scumbags. They were like – Wait, and the, and the guy and said I was like, it was, what if someone it was found, just a I'm joke. Like, but what if I went a little further, and then people – and then I was in that article – and they're like, Heather McDonald was on Ashley Madison. Mm. Well, it's a good thing you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, 
Okay, so she helps with that. She helps save their, trying to help give their advice. She's like, you don't know his love language. You know, all these like terms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, then she also goes to Gina and says, I'm here to help you with your wardrobe. Wardrobe, yep. Let's clean out your closet. Let's sophisticate it. And she brings a rolling rack with two jackets on it. She goes, I brought you a, a two different sizes. And she was, and then they go through <laughs> the clothes and they find her wedding dress and they find her prom dress. And what can you do with this? And then she's like, now I really want you to try on this jacket. I'm like, why is she pushing this light pink jacket so much? That's like pretty average. Yeah. And she's like, you know, you can just wear it. You could zip it up. You could do the belt like this. I'm like, it's just a motorcycle jacket. Who the hell zips up a motorcycle? Like, yeah. Anyway, I'm like, I bet she's got a line, the same place that sells her skincare for Heather Dubrow's clothes. Because it was her jacket, And right? it was her jacket. But what's crazy and here it is, here it is. is that that producers are actually allowing her to talk about it for so long and actually keeping the footage. Because that stuff usually well, is Well, what happened out. is they did, she said, because someone brought it up, she goes, it is my clothing line. And I did, I didn't try to sneak it on. I did say it's from my line, but the producers cut that out. But I think the producers must be the same producers of their show on E. Mm, it could be. Also, it's just Wait, also there's just the not produ- a lot going on with the other cast yeah, members. Evolution so. produces OC, but maybe Evolution also does the seven year stitch or itch. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Is it on yet? Anyway, here's the jacket. I yeah, know. Sh- it's I, cute. It, it is average. I'm though. sure there's like a. I'm sure there's a couple black sheath dresses. You can never have enough. That's her style. Yeah. And you know why not? Whatever. How much is Make this your jacket? money. Do you know? No, but I'm sure okay. it's not a affordable. Lot. It's affordable. Yeah. Okay. I mean, everything like QVC ish is pretty affordable. Yeah, yeah. But um, four easy payments. Four um, easy. <laughs> I could watch Heather Dubrow all day. And Emily, I could watch all day, too. Emily had her baptism for her Mormon child. Yeah. How um, do you feel about that? I think I gave her her storyline. She came on my show, and I'm like, how the hell have you not had a conversation with your husband of 13 years about being Mormon? She's like, I don't know. I never asked him about it. I go, so he goes every Sunday. Yeah. And he gives 10% of your money to the Mormon church, and you guys have never had a discussion about it. And so then this season, had a discussion, daughter got baptized, she's crying, and then the other part was kind of weird, like, you're such a great dad, and he's not great for the cameras either, though I think he's a decent dude, but she's just like, I'm just sad because I didn't have a dad, and you're such a great dad. He's like, "Mm mm-hmm, I'm here. (laughs) How much longer do I have to sit on this couch with this guy in the cargo shorts sweating, staring at us, like, can we just fucking move on? (laughs) It is like a lot of viewers don't realize like they judge these people on camera and it's like that's probably not even who they really are. It yeah. is awkward. I want you to sit down and have an intense conversation with your person and with a camera in your face and then a producer stepping in and being like, can we go back? That was really interesting what you were saying. Can you elaborate on that feeling that you yeah. just talked about? And you're like, OK, so you go back into some other like. You know, you elaborate even more on something that's usually cut out, and you're exhausted by the end of it. Yeah. It's a lot of work. And then I also wonder, like, whenever they're with the husbands, you know? Yeah. And then they're like, you know, they went on a five-day trip to Miami or whatever, and they come back, and then the husband's like, so how was your trip to Miami? And I'm like, you're trying to tell us that you never talked about the fact that someone threw a drink at you and you're your former best friend. Now you hate. And you're like, well, it wasn't the trip I thought it was going to be. Really? What happened? Yeah. (laughs) You know what, though? There's so many times that things would happen during filming. And even though I film with my closest friends, I want it to be organic. So I'm like, I'm not telling you anything that happened until I actually see yeah, it. Yeah, like, I'm not good. texting you. I'm not I doing mean, any of it. I mean, and maybe with husbands, too, they do that, too. They're like, let me just tell you. On ca- I mean, maybe they learn. I remember Megan King Edmonds told me that with her, you know, he would always look annoyed and bored by her. Yeah. Uh, Jim Edmonds. But that was because she would tell him all of it before, and then they'd have to be forced to do the scene. So he it would be, like, regurgitated, and he would actually be bored with the info. Yeah, but he's a dick. Well, in the end, obviously, it didn't work out. But at <laughs> like, the time, she was he like... Sh- he I was a dick on camera, and he turned out to be a dick, so... Speaking of dicks, Shanna Mochler is supposedly pregnant with this guy who is absolutely awful. What is his name, again? I want to say his name. We look up his name, the yeah. Shanna Mochler Domestic guy. Violence Arrest? Yes, and I found this uh, 
Instagram account that's um, all about what an awful person he is. And How he... There are, according to what Matthew Rondu, according to stuff, he was like an aspiring model, hustled his way through a lot of things, mm-hmm. um, you know, sexually and everything to get what he needed to do. These are all alleged rumors about him. Okay. Um, I've seen all these text messages where he's reaching out to people being like, I need money for this. I need money for that. All these people that went to high school with him that just said he was the jock asshole. Yeah, he looks like He's absolutely horrible. She's 46 and allegedly pregnant, according to her. He's only like 29. She shared the pregnancy test? She announced she was pregnant. Wow, at 46. With this guy who she has a restraining order against. Fuck. I'm kind of just like... I want to see where this is in a little bit because this is a very strange story. It's a strange story. It seems very messy. And when did the restraining order take place? Because were they banging while the restraining order was like... This restraining order happened a week ago. Oh, so, so it's it recent. Is, yeah, it is got to be his baby. But he also said she was cheating on him all the time. And that's why he freaked out on her on her Instagram. Well, and there's paternity tests for awful that. things. So, yeah. So, you know what, though? I... And Shannon Mokler is the ex of Travis Barker. Yes. And was just she on looks, Big Brother. Yeah, she looks really pretty in that photo. No, she is really pretty. Yeah, but, no. But then, you know, someone posted her, like, a paparazzi photo of her walking, and she's holding her stomach, and she's like this. And they said, tell me tell me, you want the world to know you're pregnant without telling me you want the world to know you're... Like, why is this... You know, she let out this information. She's now having people take photos of her, like... Yeah. You know, I kind of just wonder... Let's well, she's just, a little messy, right? Yeah, let's just see. A lot messy. Yeah. I think that people should do background checks on the people that they're dating. Well, if she had, then this would have probably come out. But he was one of these people he always wore, according to these alleged things, a fake Rolex, as Rolex is in every photo. He presented himself as having a lot of money. He, you know. Yeah. And he was just... And and very awful to former girlfriends and. Well, he he looks hot in this picture. He so he brings women in with his looks, and then apparently he's just a an asshole. But I'm all about digging yeah. now. And if a dude tells you that like someone's crazy, that person's crazy. I'm gonna need to talk to this person. If, oh, if they were like my ex girlfriend's crazy. If my ex girlfriend's crazy. Or this person is crazy. My best friend's crazy. I need to talk to them. Yeah. Because I think you may be the fucking crazy one. Right. Yes. You yeah. live and you learn. Right. So, but people that... I were, hope she's not pregnant with this dickwad's People baby. that were around them said that, you know, there were many other occasions where he was treating her horribly. Like, you know, people witnessed it. So I hope she's safe. Regardless of, you know, being pregnant with if it's his kid or not, I just hope she's like done with him and safe. Um, this was kind of interesting. So this guy, Taryn Egerton, who's in a mo- in a play called Cock. Okay. By the way, the play is kind of a juicy story. Anyway, he passed out on stage. He fainted on stage just like me. <laughs> the only reason I'm laughing yeah. is because of the way you say it. Do they know why? I mean, no, he's the same thing. He's like, I don't know why I fainted. I'm fine. You know, he fainted with like 15 minutes left in the play or no, 45 minutes left in the play. He fainted. They took a 15 minute break and then the understudy came and finished the play. Oh my God. And, but no, they don't know is why he, he did. Is he okay? Did he yeah. have the cracked skull like you had? I don't know. I don't think he's as bad off as me, as like me, but, but he's fine. Just doesn't know why he fainted. And, um, but this, the story of the play is pretty juicy. Well, it's, it's called a, Cock. It's about a gay. So wh- why? It's about a gay guy who's been gay and out and has a boyfriend. Okay, something I have been pushing for for a long time. Okay, and then meets a woman and questions his sexuality. <gasps> oh, yes, late in life hetero. Late in life hetero. Yeah, I want to see this play. Yeah, so anyway. I love it. Who's the chick? Who's the chick in the play? I don't know. Oh, we only know him. Yeah, but I just read about it. The chick it, in the anyway. play needs to faint too, and then her name will be everywhere. 
Um, okay. A Hil- Hilaria hold on, hold Baldwin. On. I have to clear it. <clears throat> There's something like There's some fresh there. water. Would you like some water? I have or some water. Cr- okay. <laughs> Hilaria Baldwin is just always concerned, you know, with everybody. Um, Wait, hold on. I didn't see what you posted. Okay. Well, okay so first, see. Hilaria Baldwin. This. She wrote this a few days ago. Yeah, yeah. I saw her. I was inspired today. So she wrote, hi, friends. I'm going to take a social media. Oh, I have to do the accent. Hey, friends. I'm going to take a social media break. I promise I'll be back. I love you all and know you worry. So I want to give you a, how do you say, a heads up. I might check in from time to time, dropping you a photo and letting you know we are okay. Be good to yourselves and so much love and good energy to you. See you soon. And then HB for Hilaria Baldwin. I First hate all, this. So I might much. be dropping in to show you a photo. Or so two. That, so that's you're on social media. So you're just doing what you've been doing. You're just conducting uh, your presence on social media the way most people do. Like, what are you talking about? So it was pissed me off so much. So then <laughs> I wrote my this. own. Okay, read it to me. Hey, friends, I'm going to take a social media break. I love you all and know you worry. So want to give you a heads up. I've not gone missing. Please do not bother the police. They have enough on their plate. I have not been kidnapped. I am just putting my phone down. Do not start search parties in Woodland Hills. Two little hearts. I know my social break might ruin your day. Because, like, what? I didn't see a post from Heather today. Like, I, what the fuck is going on? So, please forgive me. See you soon, HM. I posted this, like, a couple hours ago, and... Fortunately, about 90% of my followers that wrote comments seem to have gotten the joke. Okay. Sadly, 10% did not. (laughs) And are like, wait, the podcast going to be up tomorrow? But, you know, like they're all concerned. And they really believed it because I guess if you weren't aware of this. So then what did you do to let them know? Nothing. They can just worry for a little bit. I told them not to call the police. (laughs) But it's just like the social media break posts are the most annoying because it's like, again, nobody – the only time I see somebody worry is when someone doesn't do this and it's really been a long time, like three months. Someone might go, hey, I used to follow so-and-so. Do you know what happened? Like, Yes. And – but don't worry about it. No. Like taking a couple days off. You don't need to do a big announcement. It's not called a break. Yeah. A couple of days off is not called a break. That just means you have a life. But also I might be Maybe dropping in with a photo here or there. So it's like, <laughs> if I look really good one night, I'm not, it's like Lent. Like I'm giving up chocolate, but you know what? If it's like a really good dessert and it's still during the 40 day, like I might still just like have a bite, but I'm not going to have as much chocolate as I had pre-Lent, but I'm still going to like <laughs> give up just pretty much give it up for the most part. <laughs> what do the comments say under hers? Do you know? Did you look at I any of them? I think they're all people. Oh, well, she blocked me because we tried to tag her. So I think she only has people that like really love her. So it's a lot of like, we love you, saying tight, you know, uh, you a well, you know, a well deserved rest, that kind of shit. Yeah. And then, and then <laughs> um, Alec the same day posted like a super flattering like picture of her like naked with like one of the babies on her breasts looking up like in perfect sunlight. I can't. So like so I'm taking doing her I'm taking the break, but now. again, if I look cute, this photo needs to get. Does put she out. have more followers than the other one? Uh, what's his name? Alec? Alec. Yeah, maybe she's trying to get his following up. Oh, oh my god! She has nine hundred thirty-five thousand. Alex. Alex, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess how many Alex Alec has. Five thirty-two. Do you have a guess? I'm gonna say he's at least in the sevens. Okay. Two point four million. Oh, oh, he has shit. a lot more. So that just killed my theory. Okay. Well, there you go. 2.4 million? Yeah. Damn. All right. Oh, I um, love this. The Sun reported that if you've still not caught COVID, it might be down to how attractive you are, scientists say. Well, we should always trust the Sun, right? <laughs> well, they, they took it from an actual college study. Oh, did they? Okay. Um, Tell me more. Basically, was they took a bunch of people and asked them if they've caught COVID or not, and they found that the most attractive people based on like symmetry of face, what is considered attractive um, did not get it. And why do attractive people might have better immunity than unattractive people? And of course I loved it because as you know, I have not had COVID and you have not had COVID. No, I haven't. I don't want to make people driving around in their cars listening to this that have had COVID twice 
to feel anything but <laughs> cute. Okay, this is just a weird study. Well, it, does, it doesn't even make sense. But I mean, I, I <laughs> has nothing to do with the way you look. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I know I'm no genius. But even I can say that. But I love studies about attractive people because when I was in college at USC, I remember the study where they did where they showed um, babies, yeah, photos of attractive people versus what was deemed as unattractive. Okay, and how babies were always smiling and looking at the attractive people, and sometimes would like cry, like. Uh, if someone wasn't cute. And so I told my sister this, and then any time we would be out and, like, a cute baby would be, like, smiling at me, she'd be like, because oh, I'd be like, still got it. Like, I still got, like, they, like, a baby knows what's cute because there's no one telling them, like, no, be inclusive. They know what is, like, completely attractive. Like, but, model, like, models from the 80s attractive is what yes. a baby finds attractive. Like, just old-fashioned, perfect face, um, according to the study that I Yeah. Read. I'm more in the zone of beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So... But babies don't give a fuck about the beholder. They are the beholder. They like what they That's, like. They like what they like. Right. I'm but just like, saying, if a baby is flirting with you in line at a grocery store. I think they can see your spirit. Just know. I think they can see you're a good human. Just know that you look good. Oh, see, when Ocean smiles at people, I'm like, she's got a good judge of character. She doesn't. It's because they're cute. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> But you could also <laughs> say that either one of these, both these studies don't make any sense. They don't make sense, but I'm going to go with it because I haven't have haven't had COVID yet. Yes. Okay. So good. I'm going to tell people it's because I'm so damn good looking. Yeah. <laughs> the sun told they did a study. The or there might be another study. It. There might be another study that comes out. Have you not had COVID? Could be something wrong with you. That I'm ready to read that article in the Sun next week too. So who knows? Oh God. How do you feel about the masks being gone? I'm thrilled feel liberated really yeah people can now see my whole face so when i'm flirting with a guy i can give a little uh, little, little tongue action along with the eyes you know (laughs) because it's a real You know what they did i did see something that i am excited about because they were saying that um this woman did a tiktok and she works at a daycare right before the mask went down and she's like this is not helping our kids because they learn how to talk by seeing mouths move right and so there might be some delay with children that are in daycares where everyone had to wear masks. Oh. I'm just saying. They'll catch up, but I'm just How do you saying, feel about the masks being gone? Oh, my God. I'm completely thrilled. I'm sorry. Yeah. I always went along with it. I never I never wanted to be that person. Why aren't you wearing a mask? Yeah. But I think uh, – I'll say it right now. I think we're going to look back at this time and people are going to make fun of it. Make fun of how we reacted. But whatever. I'm glad it's over with. Yeah. I mean, I – I'm someone who, like, I will know when I'm afraid. Yeah. And this just never made me afraid. I wore my mask. I wanted to protect right. other people. If I didn't feel well, I stayed home. I always got my COVID test every 72 hours. Like, I liked it when I didn't have makeup on or a giant set. Yeah. I mean, I... So you can still use the mask for that. Totally. You totally can use it for that. <laughs> like, I just was never afraid of it. I, I fell in yeah. line because... Yeah. People were telling me you have to wear a mask, so let's wear a mask. Let's keep people safe around me. Now that it's done, I'm like... Do you think... What's your prediction for you don't have to wear a mask on a plane? When is that... I think that's not going to... No, I think we're going to have to do that for a while. Like a whole other year. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. I'm totally... I don't want to make other people feel uncomfortable and unsafe. And I don't want to be kicked off a plane. No. Um, Like, I'll wear the fucking mask if if you want me to. Yeah. If you say I don't need to, then I'm not going to wear it. Because right. I like showing off my fabulous give them Lala lip liner. That's right. Oh, or Just lip gloss. Saying, or lip gloss. <laughs> this is my color. I have on just the quencher. Look, the gone. Clear, clear quencher. I Which one is that? One. Pop off? Yeah. I need a new one. The pinky. Um, this I'll is kinda... send you a whole box. Thanks. Yeah, I like some free shit. Um, this is kind of interesting. So this story went viral over the weekend. Um, it was a 13-part like story with on an Instagram from okay. Humans of New York okay, about this woman, Venus, who tells her story in these long posts and everyone's going crazy because they were like dropping them like throughout the day, but like you kind of had to keep checking. Is this the day. woman the owner of the page of Humans of no, New York or is no. she just featured on this? She's featured. Okay. 
And uh, everyone's sending it to me. You got to have this woman on your podcast. You got to have this woman on your podcast. And I started to read it, and I was like, God, I, this story's familiar. Again, is there not a story I don't already know? Can someone give me a new story? Oh my God, I interviewed her. A year oh, you ago. already did it. She, and afterwards, she said, "I won't let you use it." No. Yeah. Who is this person? She is a woman who was. Her story is. She was married, had six kids with her college sweetheart. They were the pillars of the community. They had the perfect life. And then one day she found out he had a whole second, you know, whole nother life of prostitutes in debt, giving mm. prostitutes money. Yeah. And then, um, and then something worse happened and he went to prison. Okay. And she's kind of, it's in there, but like, I don't want to. So anyway, I interviewed her. For this, you know, for, for my thing. And then she was like, I don't want you, you know, I won't, don't want you using it or I'll redo it. I can't remember what happened. And I was like, okay, fine, you know, whatever. So I reached out to her and she said, okay, you know, maybe at a later date. And okay. she's basically blowing me off now to redo it. Um. Because now she's like, on now she's on humans of NY. Yeah, she told her whole story. Scoop. So no, she doesn't. She has an agent, everything. And but when I I went back and she had done podcasts prior to mine that were not Juicy Scoop, and I listened to them. Yeah, and then I listened to mine. And yes, I looked back at the emails, and she said those other interviews, and also this guy didn't ask me the questions you asked me the specific questions and I'm not comfortable with what you, you know, with what I revealed. Oh, wow. So I know the real juicy scoop and I just got, if I'm not at liberty to tell, if you've told me I'm not share, I won't, but I will just say, I think that it does not completely match up with the Ted talk narrative that is in this. Okay. And you know, of just, because I listened to the old, a previous interview. So you still very have much, it. Yeah. And it was very much, you know, um, I pulled myself off of the bootstraps and became this fabulous realtor. Okay. And very much like, you can do it too. And like, this is how I did it. And very like Christian and everything, which is all super inspiring. I'm not taking that from her. But the way I interview, I go, wait, stop. But what about this? And I would ask these other questions. Okay. And... So it's not as a rehearsed narrative. And so that's it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's an art, though. Yeah. I mean, when I read the that's email, I'm like, That's an art to, keep, of me to tap- stick to a script. Yeah. Like, I, that's why I do reality TV, though. Yeah. Because it's like, what do you want to know? Like, these are the facts. Yeah. Hmm. That seems exhausting. It was. I mean, it wasn't. I mean, I'm just like, yeah, I was kind of bummed because it's like, no, I did find this interesting story. And it's just annoying when everyone's like, Ugh, like all <laughs> going crazy over it. And I'm like, really? Because I know, you yeah. know, uh, I did it before and I spent all this time. But like now I'm like, it's not worth it. But I just want the Juicy Scoopers to know I did it. I got it. And, you know, but if someone tells me, I'm not comfortable with something. I don't put it out. I'm not going to. No, because you but, also don't want a lawsuit on your hands. No, not at all. But who has time for she that? She did sign a release. Anyway, she, love just is blind. Saying, I was going to ask that. No, but Because that paper is sitting there but ready still, for me every time still, I walk in. She has her book. That's what she wants to sell. All right. And that's the story that she wants told and maybe not what was uh, portrayed in my podcast. Okay. So, Okay. Love is Blind season two reunion. Um, did you are you familiar with it? I'm familiar with Love is Blind, and I have to say, I was so underwhelmed by the first season that I didn't even tune into a second. Well, the reunion was pretty dull. The main thing is, is this guy named Sheik who is, is he Sheik? Who is, is he is, the one who? Which one is he? This one right here. Okay. He throughout with the girl that he chose kept saying on camera. I'm not physically attracted to her. I'm not attracted to her, but we're still going to get married. I'm not attracted to her, but I do like her personality. We're both Indian. I never thought I'd wanted an Indian girl, but like I really like her. 
And so every so in the end, she's like, F you, and she doesn't marry him, okay? And then on this, everyone loves her, but he, coming on this reunion, knowing that everyone hated him for it, he basically kept saying, come on, you guys, we knew we had to find somebody to stay on the show. And all these other people are like, that's you, that's you. And he just kept, like, breaking the fourth wall, being like, come on, you guys, like, this is why we're here. We're on the sh- to do the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, whatever. But he comes off awful, and um, nobody else would admit it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And then that this, was like the juiciest thing that happened. Kind of, it was pretty dull. And then this guy, you know, Shane. He was with this girl, Natalie. He's the one that's always like with his face and his eyes, and he was came off better. He was like really kind of sad about the breakup with Natalie. And, um, is he no, the one sitting uneventful. there sad in the black yeah. shirt button up? No, no, in this one. So this oh. this is perfect because someone said, love is blind, summed up in one photo. <laughs> and um, yeah, so Shane got his heart broken by Natalie, but that was after he had a horrible fight with her the night before. Shake the vet said, I'm not attracted to you, Deeps, or whatever her name is. <laughs> this guy was an atheist who got with a Christian who dumped him like the minute they got to Mexico. And then this other one, Salvador, he was an aspiring ukulele player okay. who was always playing his ukulele on camera constantly to right. hope to get a record deal. Um, he he dumped his girl in the end. So only a two only made two made it. Two made it. Two groups made it. Uh, yeah, here they are. The Jeanette and Iana made it, and um, and Nick and Danielle made it. And we never even heard from Nick and Danielle at all in the reunion. So well, they just sat there? They just sat there and they're happy still. Oh. So that's all. <laughs> you don't need to watch it. Uh, oh, Real House of yes, Salt Lake City. Yes, my favorite topic. Did you watch? Last night's? Yeah. No, I haven't watched it yet. Um, it got That was the second one, right? Yes. It got deeper into the fact that Meredith, this is just days after they recorded this, just days after Meredith heard... Um, Lisa Barlow's recorded rant, which mm. she says was, was to herself, but there is photos from the show that you see that there's a producer in her room. Then she opens up the door and throws her mic, but in the corner of the room, you see there's a man in there. So you do see a cameraman in Not the room? Not necessarily a cameraman. But there's a producer? There's a producer. So she could have thought she was... She was, I think she was venting to the producer. Venting to the producer and not thinking that it would be used. 100%. I bet she didn't know that a camera followed her upstairs. And that they were outside. Mm-hmm. And I want to say it is the worst. I mean, it's you cannot get past. I don't know how Meredith will ever forgive her. I would. There's no way. The, there's I mean, no way that I could get past that. She says she's a whore. She says she screwed half of New York. Andy reads the whole thing with it being beeped out that her family is fake and poses. They can't afford a home because her husband has changed jobs every five minutes. Um, yeah. And she's just apologizing. And I mean, how bad do you want to stay, like, how bad do you want to stay on the show and have lunches with these people? Because I mean, I cannot imagine. There's no coming back from it. Yeah. Because they were friends. It would be yeah. one thing, like, because Katie and I have gone toes in the past. Yeah. But we didn't like each other. Right. If we were to say those things to each other now, friendship done, we don't need to ever be around each other ever again. This is a 10-year friendship. There's no coming back. And no, and these people couldn't stand her as it was without that. But here's the thing. If those really are your thoughts... And you just said them out loud by yourself in your room without a reality show. Yeah. That's what's so crazy is because I think we've all had friendships where take reality show out of it. Mm -hmm. Something, someone's drunk, someone says something, or you realize, ooh, that's how you think of me? Mm -hmm. I know I can't continue being friends with someone. Like, I'm kind of like, I'm out. Like, you know, your truth came out. So... But there are people that talk behind people's backs and stuff and and think like that, but it's never revealed. And they do remain – they do go on with the friendship, but that's how they really feel. But Meredith could also have horrible thoughts about Lisa Barla too. She just never verbalized it and got caught. Yeah, she verbalizes it to like her husband. Yeah. Because even if you say that to a producer, producers are not your friends. Yeah. I I always tell newbies. Do not trust them. If you have something that you don't want spoken about, like you go call your mama. 
Yeah. Don't talk to them because they will finagle it in somehow. Of course. Always. That's their job too. Yes. It's like my sister who's a criminal defense attorney. She's like, cop's not your friend. No. If you're being arrested or if they're like, we just want to talk to you about why your husband's missing. They're not your friend. No. <laughs> I need a lawyer immediately. You're like, have some coffee. Let's just snuggle here and talk. No. No. And they like sit there in those interrogation rooms. Yeah. So that was Mm-mm. pretty much. Um, oh, I I did, was gonna write. I wrote one note down. I want to forget. Was that like oh, the? Oh, the other thing was all about her dad dying. Meredith's dad dying. Yes. The timeline of the dad dying. And this is what I caught. Still confused. When they were in the van of when Jen got arrested by the FBI that day. Yeah. Lisa calls Meredith and is like, "I'm so sorry to bother you. I know you're with your family." Correct. Meredith says, actually, I was in Vail, and the the um, the thing was the day before in Aspen, the the um, the wake. memorial or whatever. Oh, yeah. And then she says, I was actually in the bathtub when she called me. So she was in the bathtub and then got out of the bathtub. And then went back into the bathtub on the same day when they all arrived so she could look like she didn't care about Jen. Now who's a fucking phony bitch? That is weird. You already took a bath earlier in the day. And I guess the producers were like, it was so funny when we walked in, we saw you in the bathtub. Do you mind getting back in the bathtub when I'm going to. I'm going to defend her right now. Okay, do it. I take like six baths a day. There's nothing like getting into a bath, filling it up, and just sitting in it. I don't believe that you take six a day. Okay, when I was really depressed, when I lived at the other house, it was intense. It was like six baths a day. Because it was like I I was so – I just did that. Tell me a timeline. 10 a.m.? In the morning, I would wake up and take a bath. Then I would work and watch Housewives, and then I would be like, I'll get back in the bath. And then I would get out and I would do whatever I needed to do. And I then would come. I No, 100% six baths a day. Okay. So I'm going to defend her on this. All right. I also. She could have been like, I'm bored. I'm getting back I also want to talk to all stylists on TV shows and reality stars and housewives. at all of these? No, I'm not even going to get into the outfits. I'm going to get into something else that's really important. Okay, tell me. That I even remember from my Chelsea Lately days. Okay. The bottom of your shoes in a talk show situation are extremely important. Okay. Sometimes I've seen people have the price tag of a discounted price tag stuck on them because the stylist didn't know. In this case, the red bottoms were very scraped. So... If you are going to be on a reunion, just do not even barely walk in those red bottoms. Have the guy bring them while you sit down. Yeah. Do pull an Oprah. She used mm-hmm. to have people put on her shoes for her show. Yeah. Or if they are scraped up and you love them, you don't want to wear a new pair, just make sure that they're not showing because a bunch of them were showing their scraped up red bottoms throughout this entire reunion. Good to know because can I tell you, I actually go outside and scrape up my red bottoms because I feel like I'm going to fall. They're like too slick. But you're right. But I don't always show think, those scrapes. Shoot, it, like, don't show the I bottom of sh- have, you ever seen, have you ever seen me in an interview or anything where my red bottoms are scratched? No, because your interviews are like Vanderpump is always further up. Yeah, and then I don't even feel like in big reunions where you're all sat down, there was it wasn't like you were low couches. You were still put on the higher shoes chairs. on when you sit down. Get a new pair of shoes yes. for the reunion or interviews, yeah. and sit down and then put them on. I also know that there's a guy in Beverly Hills uh, that will paint the bottom of their red shoes. That that's might great not even, that to mean, know. That might not even be red. I don't know where he is, but that's a rumor of very rich women that would do that. They That, that weren't even really red bottoms? Oh, correct. Oh, no. I wouldn't do that. I'm telling you. No. Well, some of the listeners might. Yeah, they would. I would not. I'm sure, there's, I'm sure if you asked a shoe man, they probably know how to do it. 100%. Or can you repaint these reds? I would repaint red bottoms, but okay. I don't need to pretend like I'm wearing red bottoms if Miami. I'm not. Miami. By the way. I think this is the best reunion looks I've ever seen. They house, all look so lights. fantastic. I love every single dress. I love the combo with each other. Uh, so I mean, good. Look at the comparison. No, this I, I no. no between the no one feathers awful feathers velvet awful of Salt Lake versus 
the they, sunny glitz. Mm, it's all Miami. so good. They all look so hot. I'm obsessed with the Larsa fight that she had with Adriana about her BBL. Me too. Ar- or Ariana, whatever her name is. Adriana? Adriana. Aud- I think it's Adriana or something like that. She said, Larsa, just be honest. You know, like you had a flat ass when we were on the show before and now it's big. And Larsa's like, because I was 105 pounds. I'm 140 now. I'm athletic. You're not. I work out. <laughs> Savage. And she's just like, I'm sorry, just say it, just say it, you know, and she's like, I love it when people go, can you just be honest about your plastic surgery? And someone's like, I've never had anything done to my face, just a little lip fuller, filler, a little lip, uh, a little fuller in my jaw, Botox around my eyes, a little bit here, I had a tiny bit of cheek filler here. Um, but no, like no, no surgery, no, no surgery. plastic surgery. Uh, oh, and I had my boobs done. Yeah. So I'm like, who does it twice? And um, and you're like, what? What the fuck? Like, just go, yeah, I'm like all about it. So Larsa, th- like that was interesting. And um, and then I'm excited about next um, week because they bring up d- this girl who's this doctor. I forgot her name, Nicole. Nicole. She's like, is there an NDA with you and Kardashians? Like, why can't you talk about it? And I there, that, there's got to be. Yeah, that's going to be kind of juicy. There's one hundred percent. And also, she just doesn't want to piss him off. Well, would you? No, but I talk about him all the time. But whatever. But I you're think, you're yeah. savage on another level. Yeah, but she. Um, so anyway, that's that's kind of juicy. And, you know, uh, my whole thing with like the injections or boob yeah. jobs, jobs, butt jobs. I feel like, for me, I need to be honest about anything and everything I'm having done, and here's why. There are people that are looking at my Instagram or watching me on TV that live elsewhere, and I'm not about to sit here and make them think that I haven't touched myself right that way and with needles because yeah. I'm touching myself daily. Like, it, I just don't feel comfortable with that. Yeah. I don't like it. Like, it makes people feel insecure. It's like I, I want to know if she had her butt done because I would like to go there. Well— <laughs> Um, I would like my ass done. And for some reason, no one wants to talk about their asses being fake. Don't get your ass done because it's going out of style. Um, listen, uh, this girl, (laughs) this girl, uh, Julia, she's the lesbian. Yeah, I love her. The, her tragic story about her baby. So she had a baby that was 10 months old, uh, with this guy who was this, they weren't married and he was very powerful. Yes. And she hires a nanny. She tells a whole story. She hired a nanny who she got through his secretary. Yep. This woman shows up and within like seven days or something of the woman being there, the child's in the hospital with shaken uh, death syndrome. Yeah. And the baby dies and the nanny disappears. She never, there's no convictions. There's nothing, no investigation. This is also, um, I think this was in Paris or something. And then the and then um the guy his girlfriend meets her for lunch and says, "Are you still sleeping with the baby daddy?" even though her son said. She's like, "No." And she, and then she says, "Well, I know the truth about your how baby. your baby dying." And she's just so disgusted like she runs away. But then a little bit after that, that same woman murders him. Yeah murders the guy during a dominatrix thing where he's head to toe latex yeah but him. Sh- but the story was in the press back in the day that he was suffocated due to the latex dominating stuff yeah the, what's her name again uh julia julia said that he was shot oh didn't you hear her say that yeah, in the so- reunion but if we look it up right now, does it say he's shot? I didn't look it up. You're the juicy scooper. Okay. Well, I'm too tired. I, I think <laughs> that it was proven that, like, she went, like, she was convicted, the, the mistress of killing him. Yeah, she went away. Yeah. Anyway. The story is, like, unbelievable. Yeah. And then she. And had, the baby was 10 months old. Yes. It wasn't, like, 10 months old, Ocean is fully, like, all babies. No, it's horrible. It's just like the saddest story. And she, she comes off great. I mean, I think this cast is – and I think the show is really good. I don't want to see anybody go. I, I don't either. I want to see the show continue. And Do you I, think it should be on Bravo, though, and not Peacock? 
Um, I think they were smart to launch some things on Peacock to get people to join Peacock. But then again, I think they've he- been. But then they've been showing the Peacock stuff, like the uh, Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. Mm-hmm. They, they, it's now you can see it on Bravo. So they'll probably. I mean, I hope that they throw this on instead of the below decks twenty four seven. Throw this on Bravo and then absolutely have a. They think he believes that they put Kim with Pete Davidson together to help launch the return of the Kardashians on Hulu. Okay. And that is why this head resembles this guy in his severed head video. <laughs> you guys, it, it, I feel... I also, think, I also think Hulu doesn't need any help to get people to watch the Kardashians on Hulu. Honestly, all they had to do was post that story that they all posted, and I was like, I'm watching it. Yeah. But they always do. And have- I, do, I don't need Kim to be dating Pete Davidson to watch either. Yeah. Yeah. I could watch Kim literally just sit there. Just eat a salad? Get ready. Yeah. That's all they've ever done. Yeah. And it is just that interesting. Right. So he's got to he's got to calm down because what people don't understand is there's crazy fans out there who Kanye says these little stupid yeah. fucking things takes one crazy fan that says I'm going to be the hero yeah. and does something. And well, that's what, what they're concerned about, you know. But it should be a concern. And then someone's like, why, you know, why can Kanye act this way? Why is Kanye not in conservatorship yet Britney Spears was? Well, they have nothing to do with each other. Britney Spears' family did that to her. It, I mean, being like, she's a woman, he's a man. And at one time, it was rumored that they were trying to get him help. His family being, he, you know, he, the Kardashians. He needs help. But, you know... Who knows? So, But when someone has that much money and power, it's, like, really hard to control a situation. Yeah. You know? But, like, what he's doing to her Have is, you watched the doc about his? I doc? did. Did you like it? I loved it. and But it also made me sad because he was so bright and vibrant and, like, so into his craft. And I think after he lost his mom is when... Things just so people were saying like that the 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 way he talked about his mom was like so brilliant because and so fabulous that I want to be that kind of mother because she like built him up so much. Yeah, and when you lose that, yeah, you're devastated. But then is that the greatest way to be a mom though? Like uh, like if if you build up your child so much that if anything changes that they can't, I don't know. Not that she caused his like state of mind i'm sure she was a wonderful mother but like yeah. and i have not like watched it i was just kind of watching up i think she was a, a wonderful mother i mean that is the, the way to be right. but like i don't know and then they said well of course you know he which is what i said he produced it himself so it only showed the greatest stuff it didn't show all the awful things he did it of was course all, he like, produced yeah, it himself yeah, and so, like I, people aren't blind to that yeah. like yes the documentary was great but this like what he does to her on right. a daily basis it's not funny it's not cute it's not entertaining it's disgusting no and it's like you know it, and it's it's scary it's it's scary it's, you know kind of some crazy shit um oh i just wanted to share with you this couple's engaged who is this <laughs> this is the patriots owner oh robert Kraft and his girlfriend She's a doctor. Dana Bloomberg are engaged. And the news was revealed by Tommy Hilfiger at the inaugural Amfar Gala Palm Beach event over the weekend. Can you just look up their ages? Yeah. I'm just curious. Wait, I think the Kraft sent me a baby gift. Who's they the Kraft? did. Robert Kraft's son sent Ocean <laughs> a bunch of Patriot stuff. <laughs> Maybe you'll get to go to some Patriot game. I mean, you know. Yeah. I, I just want like, to know the – just the age difference is kind of cute. What is it? What is it? I'm I'm going to guess he's 76, and I'm going to guess she's 37. Now you guess. I, I'm in the same boat as you. You have to pick a different he, I age. think – he's got to be pushing 80. Okay. You – give me a number. And I bet she's – I bet she's 38 to 39, and I bet he's 79. Okay, well, he you looks basically like he's pushing took exactly what I said. Okay. But she looks in her 40s. Doesn't she look? She's wearing no. a crop top. She is a doctor, though. No, so it's I changed like... my answer. Okay. She's 43. Okay. He's definitely almost 80. He's got to be 80. And I'm going with she's 37, he's 76. 
Her eyes are telling her age because she looks wise. She's 80 and she's 47. Okay. Because she, she's, she looks amazing. But her eyes have wisdom. See, it's all in the eyes. It's all in the eyes. 47 and 80. How do you feel about that age difference? I think it's horrific. I think it's horrific. I think, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I will go no I younger also, than 28 and no older than probably 38. I guess when you're that age and she's a doctor, she's worked her whole life, she's probably like, you know what? I don't fucking care to fuck anybody. Let me just go to the games and have some fun parties in Palm Beach and – in a few years, I'll have, you know, I'll be able to do anything. I'm, pretty much, she probably can do anything she wants now, but then she'll really be able to do anything she wants. That's what I think. I just is. think And she age... probably enjoys talking to him and stuff. No, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't. They have nothing in common. Take it from someone. I'm, like, really... Do they're... you think they even have football in common? No. No. <laughs> I think it's a bunch of... No. There, it's... Imagine going home. And being together by yourselves. Yeah. Oh, no. I can't think of anything worse. Oh, I do want to end because I do want to – I did forget to say this. I mean, even in that photo, she doesn't look like she's enjoying it. Oh, when I was talking about Kanye and his – you know, his new girlfriend, Mm -hmm. um, she did admit to having a a BBL, a Brazilian butt lift. Who did? His new girlfriend, the one that looks just like Kim Kardashian. She she admitted to it? Yeah. Cheney Jones. Cheney, yeah. She's really pretty. She said, this is my face, but I have had a, a, a BBL. I think she was another one that was like, I had a little Botox and an arch lift. I don't know what she said, but she definitely said, I've had a BBL. See, but I this, respect that so much. But had. Yeah. But she doesn't, like, and I think her boobs are real. They hang in a real way. I think she might have said that, too. Anyway, she made a statement. Actually, can you look up her Insta? She said at her Insta, she's like, I know a lot of people are coming to get to know me, and I'm just going to let you in, speculate on me, and this is me. Like, I'm glad. I look like, I look like Kim, because I've always looked like Kim. She didn't say that, but she, I mean, that's her face. You can tell. She doesn't look like someone that went into a doctor's office to look like Kim K. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Oh, and then Julia, um, what's her name? Uncut jams. What's your name? <laughs> Uncut jams. Yeah. Um, Julia Fox. Julia Fox said that having the Birkin that Kanye gave her has given her so much anxiety that she's constantly worried about it, where it is, if it's safe, if someone's going to try to steal it because it's worth ten thousand dollars. And people are like, oh, "Wait, aren't you a mother? <laughs> <laughs> like, shouldn't being a mom?" Be something that you worry about more than your bag. And, like, why don't you just get rid of the bag? Then why don't you just go to the real real and fucking get rid of it? I will say, since become even when I got the Birkin, I really didn't care about its safety. Oh, you, you know? have a Birkin? Yeah, I do have one. Okay. And um, what was it for? A special occasion? My engagement gift. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it is and... real. I had it looked at. Okay. Um. The ring was shit, but the yeah. bag was real. Okay. Um. And yeah. And I especially don't care about it now that I'm a mom. Like, but I, what, do you take it out? Rarely. It's kind of big. What color is it? It's like the camel color. Okay. It's a gorgeous bag, but I'm definitely not like worried about its safety. Yeah. I will say though, when I made my exit from yes. the home, I got. An Airbnb, like, in the Hollywood Hills lockdown, and I rented the whole building. And the woman comes, and she's like, can you Venmo me um, the payment? And I was like, oh, no, no, no. Can't have a paper trail. I get my Birkin out with a bag of fucking cash. And I think this woman was like, who the fuck is this? And why is she paying me, like, 14 grand in cash? And I'm just lost right now like her whole life is in this building right now right like, yeah. there's boxes everywhere what the fuck and i was telling her i'm like don't be alarmed i'm not a squatter all of this stuff is going to be moved out but that was the only time i was concerned about where are the you, on, the, are you was. on the netflix episode worst roommate <laughs> is that a real thing yeah there's a there's a two two there's one that's two-parter that's about the Serial squatter, but this guy that would move in. So, okay, so, Eddie, so there you go with the bags. Yeah. 
People thought, you know, he gave he gave her friends each one too. And they're like, you know, I Cuz for him 10,000 is nothing. Right. But I mean, then you break up. I just know that if I was in that situation and my friends and my friend's boyfriend gave us all the handbag, certain friends, I think would definitely call me back and be like, "All right, give it to me." Yeah. Like you, you know, you going, you don't just like. Yeah, but I'm he's Kanye West. He's not worried about a ten thousand dollar bag. I'm just saying. I think the girl, Julia would call. Julia would oh, call her girlfriends and be say, like, "Give it back." Yeah, like I worked my ass off. Like literally, had to wear latex like every day and hang out with this weirdo <laughs> and boot pants. And now it's over. Like the money train and the publicity are over. Do you really know, think it's, you, it's as my really friend, sad. deserve a ten thousand dollar bag? You don't. It's sad because no one talks about her anymore, right? Do they? I mean, I just did, just to throw her a bone. <laughs> no, but she's really sweet. She's really sweet. No, she's not. I listened to the whole interview. She's. Oh, I see. I didn't. What do you listen. hang out with her? She's a buddy of yours. How do you know she's so sweet? No, she. I didn't listen to her interview. I just. <laughs> someone texted me and was like holy shit did you know julia fox follows you and i was like who's that so she's, she's really like, sweet because she's one of no, your 1.2 no, million followers no, 1.7 sorry i know i can't get it up it's like the craziest shit it's the craziest shit can't get it to two <laughs> it's, it's almost as stressful as my birkin bag it's not stressful at all <laughs> it's just annoying <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't stressful just annoying I've been at so 288 I, for I like looked, ever. Go on. I looked at my DMs and she wrote me a really kind message. And I told her. What did she say? She was just like, you've inspired me so much. Thank you for sharing your story. Like and- Lala Cat. She's like really inspiring. You, if that makes sense. <laughs> if that makes sense. She's really inspired. I just like, I love her vibe. I mean, she's a mother too. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know that I could like go travel with Kanye West though with without my baby. I'd be like, "Yay, we got to get some latex for O. She's yeah. got to be in Paris for Fashion Week. Where is the baby?" What oh, when she was traveling around, I think the baby was fine, but the baby well, was not the with baby them. Was no, the baby fine. was not coming. The baby's not coming. His four kids weren't coming. Her baby wasn't coming. It was his four kids need to stay with. It was with. just a weird little thing they did for like two and a half weeks, and it was over with. I mean, that's come on. all it was. I, I think it was like a month. All right, maybe it a month. Felt like a fucking eternity. It felt really long. It was way long. Yeah, Lala. What else? Tell us everything. Well, you can buy Give Them Lala beauty products at GiveThemLala.com. You can follow me at Give Them Lala. Get me to two million. Get it's me, really just like a personal to, uh, goal. Get me to three hundred thousand. I'm at two eighty eight. You should be, have millions. You're I know. So I should. funny. You're the only person I never think about muting. Thank you. That's You're about, welcome. That that could be a Hallmark card. You're the only person I think about not muting. Yeah. Lala Kent. Can we make a little card like that for tomorrow's show? That's cute. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's actually like really sweet. <laughs> I'm I I love muting people. I feel like it's it changed the button though. Like I, I don't know, I have to find that button again. Sometimes I get annoyed because I'm like, I swear I muted this person and it's like, oh, it's because I only clicked photos and not stories. Oh. <laughs> And why do you mute someone? What is um, the main reason? But beside, you don't want to follow them because a freak fan will find out that you stopped following them, right? Yes, yes. So you want to mute them because why? Sometimes they're overposting. I'm sure people mute me because I'm constantly like, give them all a lip gloss, give them all a lip gloss. So I'm sure all my friends have me muted as well. I don't but, think you post that much. Maybe on stories you post more stories, stories but grid yeah. is very kind of rare, I think, for you. Social media is really tough for me. Like if the day that I don't have to have it, I'm handing it over well, to someone That's why I took a break else. today. Yeah. And I hope my followers are okay. And no one calls the police. Don't call the police. She's fine. I'm looking at her. <laughs> She's totally fine. <laughs> um, okay. So, okay. You have your Lala Beauty. What else? I have give them all a baby for those of you who are giving birth or have children and you uh-huh. want, we got you covered on the basics. That's give them all a baby.com. And yeah, that's where I'm at. Well, Living I love it. Dream. 
And our baby is turning one. My baby turns one on the 15th. I know. The Ides of March. My little water baby. You're coming to the party, I right? I am coming to the party. I'm okay, so good. excited. I don't know what it's going to be like. I handed that. I punted that job off to my assistant. I'm sure it'll be fabulous. I'm sure there'll be a balloon wall and like a lot of like way too much candy <laughs> that no one will eat. Probably. And yeah, it'll be a whole thing. I'm that was excited. my biggest concern about having a kid is that I'm horrible at hosting any sort of party. So I'm just thankful that someone else is taking over. No, it's going to be great. And yeah. I'm excited to go. Thanks for having me back. Thanks for coming always. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>